What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another daily transfer video for you guys today. Before I start this video, I just want to say as usual, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like and subscribe button and get rid of all the red from this channel as humanly possible. And don't forget to press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content. Now, if you haven't checked yesterday's video, we brushed on a little bit of the William news that just came out. It literally came out like half an hour after I uploaded the video as well, which was a kick in the teeth. Now, we also talked about some other transfer news as well. So if you haven't checked it out, check out the previous video too. And on this video, we're going to talk a bit more about the William to Arsenal transfer. We're going to go into a lot more depth about it. We're also going to talk about Ben Chilwell and a potential 80 million transfer that could be going for the English left back. So we're going to brush on some little to stay good news as well. And we're also going to chat about Christian Pulisic and when he'll be returning back from injury. So again, if you guys want to see more content like this, press the like and subscribe button down below. Let's go straight into the biggest talking points of the last 24 hours. And it's Willian to Arsenal. We found out yesterday that Willian had rejected another two-year deal from Chelsea in favour of a three-year deal that other clubs are offering. And it's rumoured that Arsenal and another club are interested in still signing up Willian. And Arsenal have offered him a three-year extension with the option to extend that for a further year. So it could be a four-year deal. Now, Arsenal seems to be Willian's favourite option because he prefers to stay in London. He's built a life here over the last seven years. He's got a family here. He's got also a restaurant with David Luiz, which is also another reason why he's probably wanting to go to Arsenal as well because he has David Luiz and he has that connection. And I think they've got the same agent as well. So there's, there's a lot more for Willian to stay in London compared to going out to America, even though it's not the most financially lucrative option as well. Uh, David Ornstein recently said on this podcast, that this isn't going to be the most expensive option on the table for him and compared to the MLS it really isn't and that this is also an Arteta transfer and this isn't the board trying to be stingy or anything or trying to save money this is Mikel Arteta saying I want Willian in my team and he believes that he can provide experience and he can create a winning mentality and, and a winning culture that also are trying to build up in their side because they have a lot of transitioning to do yes they beat us in the final and yes Arteta's doing better than, than what Emery's been doing over the last year and a half they look like they're on an upward trajectory and they need players of experience and players that know how to win titles and trophies and players like David Luiz and William can do that and I will be honest William can still offer something to some teams but it really is only to a point he can track back he has that experience around him and there are some good games in him he does turn up for some big games but like, I'm not going to try and big him, up, big him up too much now that he's leaving. You guys know my stance on Willie and you guys have known it for years. I think he's inconsistent. I think he slows down too many attacking plays. I think the face I'm going to have when I see Willian step up to take corners at Stamford Bridge and it's in an Arsenal shot, I'm going to be so gassed because so many corners, so many set pieces I've seen get killed. And Willian is very here or there. And I will say he is a good support playmaker. He can dribble well, he's a good ball carrier and he can bring the and he can bring other players into play by taking other players out of the game to focus on him. I just don't think he offers too much. And I think when it comes to end product as well, it just isn't there. Yes, he's been involved in two title winning teams, but I'm saying for in Chelsea's case, if you want to win the title, you need to get rid of players like William. 16-17 and 17-18, Alonso got more assists than him. 14-15, JT, Ivanovic, and I think even Loic Remy contributed more goals than him in a season. I think he's still yet to hit 10 goals and 10 assists in a full season for Chelsea. Realistically, as a Chelsea fan, I'm sitting here saying, Willian's going. Like, that's just one of those chances that we need to do. And I've been saying for William, we probably should have got rid of him years in advance. If it was done any time between the last two seasons, it would have been a smart idea. And even Barcelona, who I think are still interested in William now, were trying to get him for 55 million two seasons ago, and we just said no. And I think United were trying to do the same thing. And I think Jose was interested in putting Martial as part of the deal as well, and we said no. William's been at Chelsea for way too long, in my opinion. He has been a great servant to the club, and he's been loyal to Chelsea as well, which I also think is to a point, because I think for the last couple seasons, it's been obvious that Chelsea is as best as William is going to get. Those Barca and United bids came out of nowhere, but when it comes to a place of quality, nah. Honestly, we can we can do a lot better than William. I think thanks for the memories when it comes to him, but 
let's let's all be real with ourselves the last couple seasons we've all been frustrated or we've all been disappointed we've all had our william moments where we sat there and raged and we thought what the hell are you guys are you doing so William leaving it just it frees up some some of the trans some of the wage uh, sorry I can't even get my words out it fills out some of the wage bill because he's already on a 120k a week contract and I think he wants the pay rise as well so in Chelsea's case I'm so glad we didn't give in to the demands because bruv it, imagine we kept him to the age of 35 on free on 120k a week or more than that. And you don't, I don't care even if you are a William supporter to the end, you can't tell me at the age of 35 he would still be worth 120 grand a week compared to him now. Because he is on the wrong side of 30, he's turning 32 at the end of this week. And that's only downhill from here. I know that sounds like a FIFA comment and everything, but let's be real. Do you see William getting more than 10 goals and 10 assists at Arsenal? I would put money on the fact that I don't see that sort of shit. So for when it comes to William, thanks for the memories, but nah, I've, it's way overdue the time for him to go. Moving on to the next piece of news, Ben Chilwell. And we've known all throughout the season that Chelsea have been interested in Ben Chilwell. This is a rumour that has not been dying. And now the transfer window is, is about to open. I think it already has opened as well. This is only going to get stronger and stronger. And Brendan Rodgers has, has insisted that he's not for sale despite Le Leicester City dropping out the top four. He said he's not a player we want to lose. I'm quite relaxed on it and I'm not worried at all. But... I think there's a lot more to this than what we originally thought. Danny Drinkwater, he's already been posted taking photos with him saying summer transfer scouting in process or something like that. So big up Drinkwater for that. But for the price tag that Leicester City are trying to say that he is worth, we should ignore, we should hang up, block the number, everything just for the plain disrespect. They're saying 80 million plus for Ben Chilwell. And I think half the reason why is because of how much they were able to bend over Manchester United for the Maguire transfer. But in the case of Chelsea, Ben Chilwell isn't worth 100 million. Ben Chilwell is worth about half that. Maybe if you want to push the 50. Maybe. Like, maybe. Only because I do think he can grow as a player. But 80 million smoking sawdust. I hope no one touches that deal. And he'd be the most expensive defender in the world as well. And imagine... After with the Kepa transfer and everything that's gone wrong with that, most expensive is a word I don't want to hear. So when it comes to Ben Chilwell, I think there's other options we could go for. We're looking at Sergio Regulon, we're looking at Tagliafico as well. Please just go for one of those options if Leicester C are really going to take the mick out of us like that. Don't go near it. Um, any other bits of news? Marco Testegen. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has said on Twitter that Testegen isn't for sale. I said on the previous video yesterday because Chelsea were looking for a new goalkeeper. Testegen was one of those options. And Chelsea have inquired about Testegen. They're trying to get the best goalkeeper that we can get because at this point, whatever goalkeeper we get is going to be our goalkeeper for the long term. We've already overspent when it came to Kepa heavily and we're already going to make a loss on that. And usually teams don't spend a lot money on goalkeepers because whatever goalkeeper you have usually lasts you for a long period of time unless he's a snake cunt like Courtois but it is what it is and when it comes to with this Kepa transfer and everything that's gone wrong with that if we want to be serious about title contenders, we need to be serious about the level of goalkeeper that we're trying to get as well. And we've gone after Testegen, we've gone after Oblak. Oblak's still there. There is still potential for that transfer, but Testegen is not for sale. And I'm not really surprised. I don't see any reason why he would leave Barca. I think Barca are offering him 350k a week as well. So if we even attempted to match that, that would kill our transfer budget. So that's not happening. We can just forget about that. Christian Pulisic is potentially going to be back for the next for the start of next season. We thought he was going to be out for months after that injury and also after that medical video that I, I don't remember the name of that guy, but some American guy put a video of Pulisic's injury and how long he could be out for, and he was saying four to five months or some madness. We're hearing actually four to five weeks, and that means we'll be back before the start of next season with the end of lockdown and football game pushed back a couple months. And it's a shame that with the form he was building over the last couple of months before lockdown, I mean after lockdown, that he now has another injury and another setback because he had another injury that held him back for a couple of months. And realistically, it's probably the reason why we finished fourth because we needed a player like Pulisic playing for us a lot more consistently than he did. Hopefully, we bring him back slowly, I think. 
with us only having one real match unless we produce the comeback of comebacks on Saturday. I think he'll probably he'll come back a lot more fresher. He will come back a lot more fresher. So it's the right time for an injury, if there ever is a right time for an injury. So yeah, Christian Pulisic will be back. There won't be too much to worry about. The last piece of news is Mohamed Sanko to Stuttgart. He's an under-18 Stoke striker who's been shining on the under-18 scene. And since leaving Stoke, he's been playing for Chelsea. He's been training with the Chelsea team at Cobham. But Chelsea have not decided to try to sign the striker. They believe they have enough similar quality available in that position. You've got players like Armando Brojo, the same age, same build, who's going who are growing through our academy as well. So they're trying not to sign too many players just for the sake of it so he looks like a great player I'll be real I haven't seen too much of him to say anything serious but he looks like a decent player from like the one or two compliment compilation I've seen so don't take my word too much for it Pro hopefully we hear his name more in the future hopefully it's in a Chelsea shirt but it is what it is guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below of all the news topics I've spoken about today let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the comments that I've made don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow peace